This 3D print printed at a 0.28 layer height at 100% infill, so it's nice and strong. Printed on the Ender 2 Pro, one hour and 55 minutes. Same file printed at a 0.28 layer height, 100% infill on the Ender 2 Pro took 50 minutes. Hour and 55 versus 50 minutes? What's going on? They're identical. I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. Here's the part I'm printing. It's a collar that locks around the pole of an ice fishing camera that I'm printing for my son. I printed at my 4.12 rough profile at 25% infill. I sliced it and it said it would take 48 minutes, pretty quick. Looking at it in preview, this is what 25% infill looks like and I was wondering if it would be strong enough because I was gonna put a bolt through this and tighten the collar. Well, once I tried it and tightened it down, the thing split. So it wasn't strong enough, so I decided to print it at 100% infill. Now, if you've never done this, it's real easy. Just change your infill density to 100% and slice it, but it's gonna take a lot longer. One hour and 55 minutes to print this thing, but you can see it's solid all the way up. And when I tightened the bolt on it, it worked great. So that was done, but I wanted to see if I could print this faster. Well, Cura 4.13, advertises that they have a faster print algorithm. Increased print speed, it's supposed to print so much faster, especially 100% infill. So I wanted to try it. Well, it turns out it's only available for the Altimaker printers. Here's the S5, which is the first one I tried, and it shows this extra fast profile. Now it's a 0.3 layer height, and it's got a bunch of these not overridden uh, remarks in it. I don't know what these mean. I've never seen those before. So I just set it to 100% infill, and then I sliced it. 53 minutes. I just knocked an hour off this thing compared to what I did before. So I thought, what's wrong with it? And it looks normal. It looks just like 100% infill. So I went to the Creality Ender 2 profile, and it's not there. There's no extra fast. It's only Altimaker. I went through all the settings and realized they had very high acceleration. So this may be where they're getting the better speed. So I decided to try that on my Ender 2. But if you know Creality printers, they don't really like high acceleration. You set them to 500 for acceleration and 8 millimeters per second for jerk. Otherwise, you often get shifting like this. But I figured I'd try it. So I set all the acceleration and jerk settings to match what they were doing on the Altimaker. I still got it 1 hour and 38 minutes. So there's some magic they're doing that I don't understand. I did try it with that higher acceleration on my Ender 2 Pro and it printed it without shifting. So maybe the smaller bed can handle these higher speeds. So one thing I can conclude, it's not just acceleration and jerk settings that's giving them the higher speed. So then I wondered if I could modify one of their machine profiles. So this time I went and picked the Altimaker S3. This is a smaller version of their printer. And I went and looked at it and it definitely had the extra fast and I set it to 100% infill, I changed it to a skirt, but other than that I used their extra fast profile, 53 minutes. So this clearly has the magic in it, and it looked the same. So what I did is went into manage printers, and then machine settings, and took a look at what's inside this thing. Now this is all the settings for the S3, including their extruder, which is a 2.85 millimeter extruder. So my thought is, let's add another one of these, so I add non-network printer and select S3, and I'm gonna change this one to match the settings of a Ender 2 Pro. So there's the one I just added, but I've got this modded one. This is the one I changed. So let's take a look at the machine settings. All these settings here I copied from my Ender 2 Pro, including the start and NG code. Then I went into the extruder and changed it to 1.75 from the 2.85, and then I just renamed this thing. And here's how it looks. You can see the Ender 2 bed inside the S3. I did make a few minor changes. I changed the layer height from 0.3 to 0.28. I did change the infill to 100% for this test. I did use the 60 millimeters per second. Normally I print at 50. And I kept all the acceleration the same because it didn't seem to be affecting the Ender 2 Pro. And then I sliced this thing and it said 50 minutes on my Ender 2 Pro. Let's see if it can do it. Now there's one more trick. It wants to save it as a .ufp file. You have to change that to a G-code file. So then save that G-code file to your machine and then drag and drop that to your SD card. Then you can plug it into the printer. And here's the result. 100% infill. I did get some stringing, 
but the actual time to print from start to finish, including warm-up time, 59 minutes and 11 seconds. Way faster than before. So then I went back and modified the retraction settings to match my profiles, but even when I did that, it still started stringing, so I stopped the print. A quick and easy way to get rid of that stringing is to hit it with a heat gun. I got it on low heat here so I could hold my hand over it, so it's taking a little longer. Normally you would hold the gun in your hand and shoot it at the part, but that was harder to film. But look at this, cleaned right up. Now I can use it. Here you have it, two identical parts printed on the same machine, the same plastic, 100% infill. The one on the left took an hour and 55 minutes, the other one slightly more than 50 minutes. They were right. Version 4.13 can definitely print faster than any previous version, especially 100% infill. You just have to hack a machine profile right now to use it with an ender. And if you're going to get rid of the stringing with a heat gun, don't do it the way I did it, holding the print above and burn your fingers. Hold the gun in your hand and shoot it at the part, you know, down on the table. I just did that because it was so much easier to film and see the stringing disappear. I'll put a link to this file that'll come with a .3MF file that has the profile in it. So you should be able to just load that into Cura and it should automatically load that profile so you can try this out for yourself. I'll put a link in the description below. If you like what I'm doing here, you can check out some of the other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just use the affiliate links in the description below. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.